This is the 2020 Chevrolet Equinox LT all-wheel drive with the one LT package and today we're going to review it. Today we're working with our friends at Mankato Motors Chevrolet in Mankato, Minnesota. Welcome to our how-to video on the 2020 Chevrolet Equinox LT, and this one has the one LT package on it. So we're going to be talking about the driver's information screen and the infotainment screen, and we're going to start over here with the driver's information screen. Now. Uh, all you have to do to control this is use the four cursor arrows plus the check mark, and that's all it takes. Right now, we're in what's called the home screen, and uh, so the information in here, you can select what displays in a different menu, but there's nothing you can change on this screen. You get your miles per hour, uh, we've got uh, gas, uh, your, your how many miles you have left, you've got a... Um, uh, sign uh, speed limit sign reader and then of course your lanes uh, assist shows up okay so if I click my right arrow here now you can see that little home icon that's what we were on all right information now this one has a whole bunch more stuff in it and you can see the little white bar that shows up so you can use your left or uh, your up and down arrow so this is the screen we already saw so I'm gonna go down this is trip one I'm gonna go down again that's trip two go down again here's my fuel range so not only do I get the range but I get my instant miles per gallon go down one more that's my oil life one more I get my tire uh, pressure monitoring and I go down one more and then my average speed is there and then of course one more and it's the timer if I click it one more time I go back to the top now you also notice that there's a check mark with a little orange circle around it says menu. Anytime you see that or the check mark with the reset, you can press that button to do what it says. So for instance, you're on trip one or trip two and you want to reset it, simply click the check mark and then it says, do you want to reset? Well, you use your arrow to go over to yes and then use your check mark again to click yes. Now it resets. Hey, if it says menu like this, Okay, then you click the check mark and you have some options. You can have your speed sign assist reader on or off. And if I turn it off, you remember earlier it was on. So if I use my left arrow, this is like your back button. I use my left arrow and now that speed, uh, speed limit sign reader is gone. Okay, I, I kind of like that, so I'm going to leave it on. I just hit, the, there we go. And then I can also go down here and exit. Um, so there are really two ways to exit. All right. Um, but you can go down through those. And anytime you see, I think that's the only one that actually had a oh, timer had a menu. So if I click on there, you can start timer, reset, or exit. And then just to exit, just press the highlight and press the check mark. All right. Um, and then we're back to um, this menu. So that was the information screen. Let's go over one more to the right. This is your media. So on media, of course, you do see that the menu button shows up, but also if I scroll up and down, I can scan through radio stations. Okay. Now, if I press the check mark button, now I can choose if I want radio or media. I can just browse media or I can go to favorites or the favorite button, button setting. Okay. I'm going to go back up here. Okay, so if I go to radio media and I click the check mark button now, I get my sources. So if my phone were plugged in with uh, like Apple CarPlay, that would that would show up as well. Okay, so you can change your sources there. I'm going to click my left arrow to go backwards. If I want to browse media, okay, well, there's no content available right now. I've got the radio shut off, okay, but that would show up there. And if I go back, uh, I can click on here and I can say here are my favorites. Okay. Now, the nice thing about favorites is we're used to them being like, okay, if you want to have your FM radio favorites, you have to go to FM radio to get them. Or if you want your Sirius XM favorites, you have to go to Sirius XM favorites. Well, this kind of puts them all together. So it's, it's, it's kind of nice. All right, let's go back one. And then you have favorite button setting. Okay, so I can have the, 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 the favorite button be a, uh, the primary 
uh, the primary favorite that I use, or I can do it to seek. So I am not really sure what the difference on that is going to end up being, but there you go. Someone can leave a comment if they know exactly what that does. Let's go back one more. Okay. And now I'm going to go to the right. And I've got navigation. So all my turn by turn uh, directions will show up here. I also got a little compass that shows up. And then I've got the check mark for a menu. So if I hit that, I can go to recents or favorites. Okay. I'm going to hit the left arrow again to go back. I'm going to hit the right arrow now, just get out of navigation and go over to phone. I don't have my phone connected, but if I did, this is where my information would show up. Okay, let's go one more to the right. Okay, now this is where you got some of your uh, some of your safety systems, not all of them, but traction and stability. So if I click on that, so this is traction control over here, and this is stability uh, control over here, and they're both on. If I click the menu button, now I can turn traction control off if I want. Or if I click it, if I click the down arrow and highlight traction on and click it again, now it's on. And then stability, if I click on the check mark, I can again have that on or off. And then I'm just going to exit. Now, I'm going to go back one more. Okay. And back one more. This is where you change your unit. So if you want metric, so if you're driving in Canada or somewhere else and you're from the US, well, this is where you can change that and then your speedometer, digital speedometer, will read in kilometers as well as everything else in metric. I'm gonna leave that on US, go back with my left arrow. Info page options. Now, info page options refers to, hang on a second, this eye icon. So, I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna click on the check mark, and I can select or unselect the things that I want to show up. Remember, we went through all those things um, with the arrows. Speed, trip one, trip two, fuel information, oil, life, tire pressure, and so on. Let's say I wanted uh, fuel economy. It's not check mark, so it's not showing. If I just highlight it and click the check mark, fuel economy will now show up. So I'm going to go back to my information. And we're going to go through here until we get to fuel economy and now fuel economy is showing up okay. there there is it okay and there we have a new screen that we didn't see before it gives me average and my best all right i'm gonna go back over to the gear info page options and the same would work if you wanted something off just highlight it click the check mark and it will take it off that page so you can customize it Right, I'm going to go back. Home page options. Okay, this is going to be the same thing that we just went through, except for it's for this screen. It affects what shows up in this screen. So if I go back and I click on the check mark, I'll say I don't want my speedometer. Okay, just click the check mark and take it off. Okay, I don't want uh, fuel range to show up. All right, those are your choices. I'm at the end of my menu. I'm going to go back. And in fact, I'm going to go all the way back to home. And now you're going to see that the only thing left on the display is the speed, uh, the sign reader, speed limit sign reader, and your um, uh, lane keeping assist buttons. Okay? So this is where you can customize those two screens, your, uh, your uh, information screen and then your home screen. Speed warning is the next thing, so if I get click on that, I can turn the check mark, click the check mark to turn it on, and then I can use the up and down arrows to set the speed at which I want the warning to come on. And then when I'm ready, I just go over here to OK and click the check mark, and now it's on. I am going to turn that off, so it's back to where it was for the dealership. Hey, if you want to know software information, that's right there. Okay, now, behind the, the steering wheel, there are four buttons. There are two on this side and there are two on this side. And I showed you that um, at, at the um, when I was first doing the, the review. Um, but basically, my left buttons work as favorites. So I can just kind of skip through them as, you know, one button goes down, one button goes up. Okay, and then on the other side, those two buttons are simply volume. So those are there for your infotainment screen. Okay, 
let's move over to the infotainment screen. So on the infotainment screen, uh, th this is an eight inch screen. This is the upgraded screen. Uh, it comes with six speakers and it comes with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It comes with uh, XM radio. It comes with HD radio and AM and FM radio along with Bluetooth. All right, so basically this works like your phone. So these are all apps that you can click on. If you see little dots on the screen right here, uh, that means you can slide left or right and see another screen. So if I go to my left, okay, this is uh, a screen that I would run most often. It gives you three different things. It gives you your media, your phone, and of course navigation all at the same time. Okay, this is where we were. If I go over one more to the right, this is where your My Chevrolet app is and your OnStar services. Although you have an OnStar button on top as well. All right, now I'll click the home button again. Down below, you've got a couple of physical buttons. You've got home, ba um, seek backwards, seek forwards, the back button, and then a push power on or off. And then of course your volume is rotary. All right. So we're gonna go through these briefly. You'll notice that the sh these uh, uh, icons down here are like shortcuts. They uh, stay on the screen all the time. So you can easily access audio, phone, and navigation. All right, and then of course you get your 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot that if you wanna to subscribe to, you can have. It comes free with a couple for a couple months uh, with buying the car. And then of course you have your te outdoor temperature and your clock. So let's let's go to audio. So in this view, you've got all of your sources here. And of course, if you want to see more, you can click on that and then it'll give you whatever is available. Okay, so if you had Apple CarPlay, that would show up too. Okay, um, let's say you want to uh, tune your radio. Well, you just do that. That goes between your favorites. Okay, if you actually want to tune, you press tune and you can either scan or you can type in the number. Right, and it works the same for FM radio, works the same for AM radio. Now, if you want to uh, look at your actual favorites, they're already up here. And all you do is, if you want to do a new favorite, you find it and you press and hold on any of these and it resets it to that particular station. So again, I like it um, that the favorites, you can notice that no matter what I click on, the favorites stay the same. So it's gonna be all your media, your AM, your FM, and your Sirius XM, all get stored into one spot, which I think is great. If you want to look at sound, like bass, treble, that kind of stuff, well, that's right under sound. And then you can just uh, use the arrows. Okay, you, uh, there, this part is, you could also touch and just raise or lower it, okay? And then if you wanna look at fading balance, that's there. And again, you can use the arrows or you can just use your hand to move it around. Okay, let's go back to the home screen for a minute. Let's go to uh, let's go to phone because I want to show you how to hook your phone via Bluetooth. So if I just click on phone, it says connect phone. Well, I'll, I'll click on there, and I'm going to turn my phone on just to make sure that it's on. I'm going to say add phone. Okay, select the vehicle name shown below from your Bluetooth settings. So I've got to go into my settings. And I got to go to my Bluetooth. And then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to look for my Chevrolet. Well, there it shows up. So I'm going to click on it. I get a number and it wants to know, is it the same? So on my phone, I have a cancel or pair like I see up here. So I'm going to say, yep, pair is the same number. Click on both the phone and the screen. Okay. Now it wants to allow contacts and favorites to sync. If, if you're, of course, in your own car, you're, you're going to want to click allow so that you can have your, your phone book and all that kind of stuff right on the car. I'm not going to do that because this isn't my car. Okay, But at least it will allow me to answer uh, phone calls. All right. So now it's, it's done. Okay? I, I am going to go back. And now you can see when I click on phone that I have I'm gonna shut my phone off for a minute. This is the basics. So I have favorites. I don't have any favorites. So I have keypad, recents, contacts, which are not available because I didn't do it. And then I can look at phones, which phones are connected. Okay. Um, and, and you could have two phones paired at the same time. All right. So that, of course, is your phone. Now, let's say I want to stream audio. 
from my phone. All right, it's not a problem. Now, if I go to the music icon, okay, and I go down more, do you know that Nathan's phone now shows up? If I click on it, now I have um, my music shows up, okay, and I can control it from the screen. So fast forward, rewind, play, shuffle, okay, if I want to hit browse, okay, I can actually go through and take a look at um, uh, some of the stuff on my phone. Now, this isn't an exhaustive list, like I won't go through Pandora and stuff. This is all coming off of my iTunes, but anyways, that's just really nice. You can have that right there. All right, let's go back to the home screen for a minute. Navigation. It's got a really nice screen on it. Now, up here, right away, because this is new and I'm not going to click up, you can set up your home address, you can set up your work address. So you can pick those as favorites right from your steering wheel controls. You can type in here and go to a, a search. Um, and then, of course, you can um, star something as a favorite. So, uh, and since this is a touch screen, okay, I can actually take and expand and come back and it's, it, it's very reactive. I really like it. And then I can, of course, scroll up or down, left or right. Okay, I can hit the search button and um, I can type it in. I can, you know, right here using the keypad, I can do it through voice command, lots of different ways. All right, and then if you want to change some settings on your uh, navigation, that's where you do that. You can have, you know, 3D heading up, you have a 2D or 2D north up. Um, you can show something on the map, like restaurants, fast food, parking, that kind of stuff. Traffic events. Hey, I'm not going to do that. It'll take a while to get up. And then edit destinations. You can, once a, a route is plotted, you can hit avoid on route, like if you don't want to go on dirt roads. And under settings, this is where you can go through and set up all the specifics, like your places, the map preferences, route preferences, uh, navigation, uh, voice control, traffic preferences, alert preferences, manage history. And I'm just going to go into one of them. But if I go to map preferences, now I can say every time I pull up navigation, I don't want 3D landmarks on. I, I want to show the terrain in 3D. And I want auto zoom off. Now, what Auto Zoom does, if you've used navigation in your car, is that as you approach an intersection at a turn, where you're going to turn, it actually magnifies the screen for you, so you can see it a little clearer. And then it zooms back out as you after you've made your turn. If you turn that off, then it won't do that. Hey, but just lots of ways to customize, and the screen is really nice and it's really responsive. All right, I'm going to hit the home button again. Um, you can program the card to several different uh, key fobs. And you do that by going through users. I can't do that. If I click on it, it says uh, this is only available after you purchase the vehicle, which makes sense. But you can customize that uh, to, to key fobs. So when you get in the car, your, your seat adjusts, um, and then your favorites on the radio will adjust as well. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go to settings. Okay, there's three little uh, tabs up here. There's system, apps, and vehicle. And the, and the two I want to show you are system and vehicle. So if you need to change the time and date, you do it under system and it's right there. Okay, and then you can go through and make the changes. And it's just a simple click. Okay, if you want to change languages, that's right there. And if you want to work with your Wi Fi hotspot, you can do that right in here. Um, and then you can click on privacy. You can turn on or off location services, turn on or off voice recognition sharing, and then um, you can get a little more privacy that way. If you click on display, if your screen for some reason is not, when well, your fingers aren't clicking, you know, your fingers are clicking, it looks like you're on the button, but you're not, you can calibrate your touch screen right there, which is really nice without like rebooting the whole system. Or you can turn the display off. Now, if you do that, Screen goes blank, but you know, there's still, if you have media or whatever running in the background, it's still running. Your turn by turn navigation still showing up in your driver's information screen. It's just that you don't have that glare. Okay. Now, if I simply tap it, it comes back on and it's on that you don't have to touch anything else. The other one I want to talk about is under vehicle because this is where some of your safety systems are. So if I go up here, um, first of all, you got that rear seat reminder. It just chimes and lets you know, reminds you to check the rear seat. You can turn that on or off by clicking. 
Um, collision detection systems. Well, you got four collision system, front pedestrian detection, lane change alert, park assist, uh, rear camera park assist symbols, rear cross traffic alert. And what you can do is you can say, okay, forward collision system, it says alert and brake. So not only is it gonna alert you, it's going to brake for you if, if you don't. Here's where you can turn those things and, and adjust them. You can turn the forward collision system off if you want. I don't know why you would, but you could. Uh, you can say alert me only, but don't brake. Or you can click here. The thing I like about Chevrolet is they always put a description of exactly what's going to happen if, you know, in this area, what, what you're changing. So you can just read that. Okay? And the rest work the same way. Rear camera symbols. Okay? Um, you can turn those off or on. As part of the parking assist systems, it's, it, it's in the um, uh, work, works off the uh, parking sensors in the back. So um, if I hit park assist and I turn that off, it's not going to warn me if there's something behind me. Leaving it on allows it to warn you and then places a, a, a graphic approximately where that item is. So that's really, really nice. Okay, so those are all right there. And these are just a simple click off or on. Um, comfort and convenience. Right here, you can have the mirrors tilt when you put it in reverse. So if I do that, I can say, do I want driver and passenger mirror to tilt, just the driver or just the passenger? Okay, that way you can see down towards the curb, uh, you know, when you're reversing. And then when you put it in drive, the mirrors come back up. Auto wipe in reverse. Well, so if you if you basically that means if you put it in reverse, your windshield wiper um, it should turn on. It doesn't when doesn't seem to do it when it's dry, so that could be rain sensing, and it only does it when it's rain. I'm not sure because currently it's on, and every time I put it in reverse, no wipe happens. So I'm thinking it's sensitive to if it's got water on it or not. Now, down here, you've got extended uh, uh, extended hill start assist. So let's say that you're um, going up a hill, okay? What it does is, if that's on, you take your foot off the brake and you move it to the accelerator and, you know, on, a, on an older car, it would start to roll backwards a little bit. Well, the extended hold makes sure that the brake stays on until you get to the accelerator. But it is a timed thing, so it's, it's, it's not sensing your foot on the accelerator pedal. It's just kind of counting seconds, and then it releases the car. You can have it on an extended hold, okay, instead of standard hold. So it holds it for about three seconds, while its extended hold works for up to five minutes. Okay, so it gives you a lot more time to get to the throttle. Now, as soon as you press the throttle, that's going to release, and your car is going to start to move. So it's just some real nice things. Now, if for some reason you don't like the chime volume in the car talking to you, you can change that. Okay, that seems to be about as low as I can get it. Okay, um, so go back. Um, lighting. Okay, you can have the vehicle locator lights. If you um, click on your remote, the lights flash. That's where you can turn that on or off. Okay, exit lighting is uh, delayed uh, headlamp turn off. So um, if you get out of the car and you want the headlights to stay on for just a little bit until you get to the door, you can set it from anywhere to nothing to 120 seconds. So you get out, lock the car, walk away, lights stay on for up to 120 seconds and then turn off automatically. Okay, um, seating position. Seat exit memory. Okay, if you want that, you can turn that feature on here and the seat entry memory, you can turn that on here. And then you can program them um, into your uh, two-person memory settings on the driver's door. Let's go back to home. I want to show you, I, I hooked up my phone through Bluetooth. You saw how to do that. I want to show you Apple CarPlay. I don't have an Android phone, but the process is the same. So I take my phone, I take the cable, my charging cable, Okay, I'm going to uh, just plug in the end of my phone, and then I'm going to go down here. Remember um, my earlier review, I said there were two USBs, a USB-C and a standard USB. Both will connect you to either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So I'm just going to take and plug mine into the standard one. 
All right, and I'm gonna wait for a minute. Uh, it says unlock phone to use accessories. Great, I'm gonna unlock my phone. Okay, gonna wait a second. Ha, huh. okay. Continue. Now, if you, everyone in your car has Android, you can actually disable Apple CarPlay so you don't see it. And here, folks, is one of the coolest things in technology since sliced bread. So, my all of my apps that I have on my phone that will work with this car show up automatically. So I'm, I just set my phone down. Now it's charging. I don't have to take it. I don't have to worry about anything. I mean, this is this is just awesome. I mean, for crying out loud, Zoom. That's incredible. Okay, I have uh, Sirius XM on my phone. You know, so I have it there. Amazon Music, Google Maps. This is the one of the best things. So, almost any navigation app that you use on your phone, Waze. Um, uh, Google Maps, Apple Maps, will all show up here and they look just like your phone because they're based, they're coming from your phone. It's just making the image appear up here. Just awesome. So if, you're, if your navigation on your car ever goes out because this does have navigation or gets outdated, whatever, you can just use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. These give you some shortcuts to uh, Google Maps, uh, music, Apple Music, and on your phone. And if I click here, of course, it gives me back to my window I was at before. But I mean, that's just, and that's how easy it is. You simply plug your phone in, unlock your phone, and just wait a couple seconds, and here it is. But let's say I'm in someone else's car that doesn't have Sirius XM satellite, but I do, so I have it also have it on my phone. I can go ahead and listen to it right there. Just awesome. And if I click this button down here again, and then I can have a split screen. So now I've got Google navigation going. I have got uh, my media up here. I can click on that and actually do my navigation plotting in Google on my phone from the car. It's awesome. So I just fantastic and so easy to use. Okay, pressing the home button here. We're just we're back to this screen, and uh, back here again. You had just have you have the My Chevrolet app. You have OnStar services, and again OnStar. If you're not familiar with it, never use it. It's a safety thing, uh, so it'll automatically call emergency services if it detects you've crashed, um, or you can call them. But it's an emergency services button, okay? And and uh, so it's a little bit of a peace of mind. All right, I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.